In this video, I'll give you the top waiver wire players to target heading in a week 11. I'm Jim Coventry of Roto Wire. Let's start out with the quarterbacks. Joe Flacco, three interceptions against the Bills, but he makes his own faith. Three interceptions leads to him having to throw more. He throws for 272 and two touchdowns. Joe Flacco has quarterback two and streaming value going forward. Matt Jones of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It appears that Trevor Lawrence's shoulder injury, left shoulder, is serious. It's possible he misses the rest of the season. Matt Jones was unimpressive against the Vikings. No surprise, but the Vikings have an outstanding defense. Jones could perform against lesser competition as a quarterback, too. Trey Lance of the Dallas Cowboys. Look, Cooper Rush is the starter. Dallas is in trouble. Season circling the drain. At this point, what does Dallas have to lose? They could put Trey Lance in. Speculative ad. Remember, Lance may not be a good passer, but we know he has significant rushing potential, and that could give him fantasy value again as a quarterback, too. Finally, this is a really wild flyer. Tyrod Taylor of the New York Jets. Speculative ad. Two quarterback leagues, of course. Look, Aaron Rodgers, almost every week, he is making visits to the Blue Medical Tent. He is taking a beating out there. The Jets are terrible. They got blown out by the Cardinals. Tyrod Taylor, with the season slipping away, could potentially see starts. And if he does, Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Tyler Conklin, maybe something works there. All right, let's move over to running back. Audric Estime surprisingly handled 14 of Denver's 17 rushing attempts against the Chiefs. Now, there's no guarantee that volume continues. It could be a one-game thing, or it could be the future of the Broncos going forward. Running backs are very difficult to find. If Estime is going to continue in this role, he certainly has top 30 running back potential going forward. Next, Cam Akers of the Minnesota Vikings could be in line for significant work if Aaron Jones, who suffered a chest injury, misses time. In that scenario, we would see Akers functioning as the lead back with Ty Chandler mixing in. Now, Akers has been with the Vikings two weeks, 19 carries, 84 yards, a few catches for 16 yards. Off a couple of Achilles injuries, but he does not look bad, and the offensive line in Minnesota is good, and defense have to worry about the passing game. Next, Gus Edwards of the Los Angeles Chargers. Edwards returned from injured reserve, so it's possible he was on waivers. His role was diminishing before going in injured reserve. However, J.K. Dobbins has been overworked, so Edwards handles 10 carries and puts up solid yardage numbers. So again, it's possible that Edwards retains a solid role to give a change up to J.K. Dobbins. Next, Keaton Mitchell of the Baltimore Ravens was actually active in week 10. If you blinked, you didn't see him on the field, but he, um, again, is active. He's playing. Very explosive runner. We don't know how he is post ACL, but Derrick Henry only plays around half the snaps. And if Keaton Mitchell can push aside Justice Hill, he could get a number of valuable touches each week worth an ad in leagues for sure. Khalil Herbert will be next of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, remember, the Bengals traded for Herbert right before the last Week 10 game, and Herbert only played 2% of the snaps behind Chase Brown. That said, he'd only been with the team a day or two. So this team, the Bengals, wants to replace the Zach Moss role. They can't keep rolling Chase Brown out there for every snap. So Khalil Herbert should see a significant increase in usage, so he's definitely worth being on fantasy rosters. Next, Ty Chandler. We mentioned Cam Akers earlier. If Aaron Jones misses time, Chandler would be in that pace, change of pace role behind Akers. Chandler could see 8 to 10 touches per game in that role. It could be a little less, probably not more. But again, we need running backs, and Chandler would have a role if Aaron Jones misses time. Next, Dearness Johnson of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tank Bigsby suffered an ankle injury in Week 10. If he misses time... Dearness Johnson could function in a change of pace role behind Travis Etienne. Etienne hasn't been getting a lot of work. There are touches to be had. Dearness Johnson has not been very good. But we have seen him get goal line work. Again, he could see volume, and that has value. Finally, Marshawn Lloyd of the Green Bay Packers 
could be activated from injured reserve after the current buy, which would be upcoming week 11. No guarantee. But if Marshawn Lloyd is activated, he could work his way to change of pace, work behind Josh Jacobs. And if Josh Jacobs were to miss time, Lloyd could see some significant work. If you enjoy videos like this, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the RotoWire Fantasy Football channel on YouTube. Also, you can check out all of our fantasy football content and rankings. You can get a free two day trial, no credit card needed. Head on over to rotowire.com slash Jim. You can check out all of our content. If you like what you see, join the team. If not, we're just glad you took a look and stopped by. All right, let's move to wide receiver. Marquez Valdez Scantling of the New Orleans Saints. He was targeted three times against the Falcons, caught them all 109 yards and two touchdowns. Now I know Marquez Velda Scantling has flashed on and off for many, many years. He's played with legendary quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Um, I think he has followed Josh Allen. But that said, he's never been a consistent fantasy performer. The Saints like to throw deep. Their depth chart at receiver is decimated. It's possible Valdez Scantling walks into a regular target role. If that's the case, he would have fantasy value. Next, Keishon Boutte of the New England Patriots. He's been playing a very high volume role for weeks, but now he's been targeted at least six times in the last three games. And in two of those games, he has a 46 and a 47 yard game. Now he's developing chemistry with Drake May. Not a high upside player, but he could be developing a solid PPR floor. Next, Mike Williams of the Pittsburgh Steelers just got traded over. They required him. He had one target in the game against Washington, 32 yard touchdown on a deep pass. Now, remember, George Pickens on the other side, he's also a deep threat. Defenses are far more worried about Pickens than they are about Mike Williams. Russell Wilson is a very good downfield passer. Mike Williams could see a, a growing role that could be full time, and that could result in some downfield boom bust weeks for Mike Williams. Devon Vele of the Denver Broncos is next. At least three targets in the last five games is not much, but it's something. The rookies had double-digit PPR games twice in those five games. Deep league value. Did score a touchdown against Kansas City. That's probably not sticky. Adonai Mitchell of the Indianapolis Colts puts up 71 yards against the Bills in a game that Michael Pittman missed. Now, I don't know Pittman's injury status, but we do know that he's been battling injuries for a while, and it's possible that he could at some point miss time. But anyway, Adonai Mitchell at 71 yards was the first productive game of his career. It's possible he could see an expanded role. They probably want to get their rookie on the field. Their season doesn't seem to be looking great at this point. Finally, speculative ad. Jermaine Burton played at least 41% of the snaps in his last two active games. He was deactivated in week nine. And he didn't do anything much against Baltimore, but he did see like three deep targets. If Burton pushes Andre Yoshivas for the number three role, because T. Higgins probably won't be out long, Burton could develop into something. But again, it's a very deep league ad at best. Tight ends, Theo Johnson of the New York Giants. He has at least six targets in the Giants' last two games, averaging 44 yards in those contests. We could see him continue to build on that role. The Giants' defense is kind of stumbling lately against good offense. They'll give up points. They may have to throw more. That would help Theo Johnson. Tanner Hudson of the Cincinnati Bengals, seven targets last week, 42 yards at a score, basically took over Eric All's roles on injured reserve. Now, remember Tanner Hudson last year, they were throwing him a lot of targets and he had a high PPR floor and Cincinnati loves throwing the ball to their tight ends. So Tanner Hudson could be a PPR option. Finally, next, Dawson Knox of the Buffalo Bills. Dalton Kincaid was in and out of the Week 10 game with a knee injury, left for good. If that knee injury results in this time, Dawson Knox could see a little increase in targets. He is a good red zone option. Wouldn't be a tight end one, more like a tight end two outside of the top 20. But again, some weekly um, insert your lineup help if you need somebody. Juwan Johnson of the New Orleans Saints, at least 41 yards in two of the last three games. The Saints, again, their pass catchers are decimated. They need someone. Juwan Johnson has seam stretching ability, and he definitely could be used in an expanded role, although he is a boomer bust at best play.